So as you can see, I've got two sketches in my model right now. I've got sketch one, which is a, a rectangle, which has been broken, and then this circle here. Now, I'm going to use kind of a pro probably a little bit of an underutilized tool is that, you know, I'm, I'm going to create a squared around transition. So I don't want to create this as one shape because it's actually going to be difficult to manufacture it that way. So I'm going to use the split tool here. And I'm actually going to split my, my circle here into two arcs. And I'm going to leave these as construction objects. Um, so that you know what my what I'm using for constraints and dimensions still apply. So I use the split feature based on that line to to split those up. Now I want to create a squared around transition here because I'm creating a piece of ducting. Let's say I mean this is obviously going to be half of it. So there's actually going to be two halves to this. Um, but I want this to be actually be unfoldable, so I actually get a, a flat pattern. And this is this is quite the impressive tool actually. Um, once you see it for as as simple as it is but yet get you know really good results something that's actually manufacturable so one of the I wouldn't say it's a limitation but if I had to use the regular loft feature there's absolutely no way to flatten that out however if I use the lofted flange tool so what I want to do is I want to loft from this shape into that shape knows how inventor is figuring out where to put all the bends and where to do all the transitions so it's creating all the faces and all the bends for me even down in the corner here so even though I'm, I drew this as you know sharp corner it's figuring out how to put those in there now you can see that we can actually do two types we can do die formed and we can do um, the, the regular faceted or press break style so I'm just going to do a die formed here notice that there's no options we can see that the, really the only option is the bend radius option I'm going to click OK and we can see that it's built it right um, for me again it's it's round the corners we're gonna go and create a flat pattern and what I'm gonna see is that it was able to flatten it out with me with the proper corrections and everything like that now I'm gonna undo that and that's really the only catch right there is that once you've lofted it as one of these output types so if you've lofted it as die formed there's no way to change it to the other option except for deleting the feature and recreating it so that's why I didn't undo there instead of just editing the feature so we can see here it's on, on the press break option. And right now it's using the, the, the core tolerance to apply or figure out the shapes here. So maybe what I want to do is make this be 0.2. And we can see now that I've got less faces because I've changed the core tolerance. Well, another option here, that's option A. Option B is based on the facet angle. So if I was to change this to 10, let's say, Venture is going to recalculate that and actually put more faces into the corner. The third option, C, is the facet distance. So maybe I want this to be 0.4. And again, what it's doing is it's going to recalculate that. So if I put a one in there, I can see that the, the, the edges or the faces I'm going to get. So in this case, I will click OK. And we can see it's gone through and created that. Again, if I cr click Create Flat Pattern, it's going to go through and calculate that. In this case, though, it puts all the bend lines in there because I picked the Press Break option. Okay, I'm going to go back to my folded model. I'm going to edit this lofted flange. And what I want to do is I'm okay with the one inch facet distance on this side. But on this side, I actually want to override this. And I'm going to stick with facet distance even though I could override it. But notice that there's actually a fourth option for the number of facets. So instead of you know letting the software calculate it, I can just say I want six. And then it figures out how to put six in there. So I'm going to click OK. And we'll click OK to that. And it's going to keep with the one inch um, distance over here but here it's evenly distributing it among six faces so again let's go back to the flat pattern and we can see that it's flattened out with the proper edges now last thing here I'm gonna go back here again and just to show that it doesn't have to be you know perfectly um, linear here between the faces so maybe what I'll do is I'll take this one here and we'll, we'll shift this up and out into space and we'll click finish and what we're gonna see is it's going to update with that so you can see it's shifted everything over, recalculated the faces. I'll go back to my flat pattern and we can see that that's been updated. So there you have one of the most powerful sheet metal tools that there is, but yet it's probably the simplest and um, easiest to understand and easiest to use um, and you get really good results from it.